In this video, we are going to discuss about components of a wearable devices. These are the classification of components of wearable devices. First one is sensors. So, sensors means it will sense for example, if, uh, if it is in a temperature sensor, it will take since the temperature uh, it is basically a input devices. Um, so, a example for a sensor is inertial sensor, bio sensor, proximity sensor, gyroscope sensor, gas sensor and other sensors. So, next component is connectivity. So, once we um, sense the uh, data which we require, um, we need to transmit the data, right? So, for that uh, we need required a connectivity. So, for that um, we can use a uh, Bluetooth, uh, Wi Fi, and GPS. GPS means a global positioning system. Next, we required um, a battery in order to operate uh, these kind of uh, wearable devices. So, it may be a conventional one and uh, or it may be a flexible one and, um, and now and also we are using energy har harvesting mod module. Next, uh, we, uh, we can use uh, interface uh, interfacing devices uh, such as uh, speech recognition module touch recognition module, gesture recognition, then uh, non-invasive interf interfaces. So, next one is uh, materials and algorithms used. So, for example, electronic textile and uh, joints, flexible displays, then accurate interpretation of measure data. So, first uh, let me discuss about uh, sensors. So, we know that uh, there are many uh, sensors are uh, present uh, in the market. So, these are the sensors which is embedded in the garment uh, which is uh, uh, which I have shown in the figure RC and uh, AB right. So, it can be classified according to several criteria. Uh, for instance, uh, the measured parameter um, sensor location and the possibility to be directly integrated in textiles. The first point is a starting base for the whole design. So, uh, these are the type of sensors. Uh, is already available in the market right uh, surface electrodes in order to measure EMG electromyographic signal, magnetometers, ascalerometer, gyroscope, barometer, uh, force sensors and uh, these are the example for the uh, wearable devices right. So, uh, depending on the application um, there may be many different possibly in interesting parameters are there. So, it is important to define them uh, with the help of the end user and to establish a list of features that the appropriate sensor should have. The features are sensitivity, time of response, repeatability of uh, measurements, duration of the measurement for single and periodic measures, energy requirement and biocompatibility. Considering the measure, measured var variable, sensor can be divided into two classes. First one, measuring the operator's psychological parameter and those that detect variables related to the surrounding environment. So, based on this class classification, the decision about where the locating the different sensors can be more or less straightforward. That is, sensors for external variable generally 
need to be put in the external layer of the garment while those for body monitoring normally requires to be put in the inner layers the issue of comfort and protection must be taken as a primary priority in any case embedding sensor with a gra- within a garment must not compromise the integrity of protection layers nor adding a possible source of danger for the wearer a typical example is a firefighter jacket as it is the main fire protecting shield no hole holes or any other heat conducting path should be generated due to the insertion of sensors in the garment that is what they are telling is uh, there must be a uh, there should not be any compromise between the uh, safety and um, uh, comfort right so for those parameters that are measured by sensors directly in contact with the skin the right location results from a proper compromise between comfort and sensitivity of the measurement to the natural status of the body for instance some sensors are very sensitive to the body motions and for this reason the sensor output may be affected by motion artifacts it is obvious that artifacts should be minimized but this cannot be simply done by reducing the human motion for instance by increasing the pressure between the sensor and the body because this could compromise the cold comfort bio ergonomic design gives a relevant contribution for solving this kind of problems finally it is important to underline that fusion of data coming from different sensors may provide additional useful information related to the particular application for instance the evaluation of the person's activity useful in emergency scenario to prevent dangerous situation can be typically done by accelerometer fusion of accelerometers and psychological data may enable the feasibility of an activity classifiers able to generate an automatic identification of conditions that may imply potential dangers for the monitor subject over extended period of time in addition to easily detectable conditions directly provided by the accelerometer signals that is resting motionless lying down a data fusion algorithm identifies conditions such as resting with high heart rate which is potentially abnormal if not preceded by any physical activity or if kept for too long after an intense physical activity which require which requires a simultaneous analysis of both signals so next we are going to discuss about communication the communication system and now wearable applications normally provided two type of connections first one is a personal area network whose peripheral nodes provide information from the different sensors and systems embedded in the garment to your sensor central node second one is a long range communication system lrs whose task is to assure a reliable link between the person and a remote network coordinate node ncn for emergency scenario the appropriate distance between the operator and the node generally varies between 1.5 and 2 km an intermediate router at a short distance should be carried by an operator and installed near the border of the disaster area provided possibly line of sight within the ncm the router should have an in- for long range communication towards the remote ncm and another for medium range towards the operator node a directional antenna and a power amplifiers are needed to face problems arising from the environmental propagation concerning the communication protocol the choice is driven by different possible criteria for emergency applications power consumption and adaptability of the protocol 
to the particular application are the main ones. For instance, in the Protex project described in the forthcoming chapter, Tetra, Vimax and Wi-Fi were taken into the consideration. At the time of project, Tetra was extensively used in the emergency scenario. But the bandwidth it can offer is quite narrow. So it hasn't been considered further for the particular application. On the other hand, Vimax has been designed to provide broadband access to a wide area with mobility support. At the time of the project, most of the available products were mainly thought for fixed access while small devices were not optimal. Under the point of view of power consumption, therefore, finally, Wi-Fi was chosen as it is represented the best compromise between link capacity and power consumption, being usually employed for notebook, PDA and cellular phone. These are some of the examples for the communication that is made in wearable mobile devices. So for longer range we are going to use Wi-Fi and cellular which is used to backup and synchronization. Then for data analytics and it can be used by third party apps also. Next ultra short range communication here we are going to use nfc so it is mainly used for payments and micro events the last one is short range communication for this we are going to use bluetooth and ant this is also used for data analytics data sharing device configuration backup and synchronization The next important component is electronics and data processing. In a standard wearable monitoring systems, all data coming from different sensors must be interfaced with an electronic box, which provide communications with the single systems, which including sensors, actuator and communication module. A bus connection, for instance, RS-485 allows reducing the number of wires and can also support the extension in the number of modules that can be connected to the electronic box by linking them in parallel in any point of bus cables. Each sensor or actuator module is based on microcontroller that provide analog to digital conversion and signal storage. It also implements a reduced set of bus commands with fully functional communication and error control. To reduce the communication traffic on the bus, it is wise to implement onboard signal pre-processing route routine to send on the bus only small amount of data extracted from the raw signal recorded by the sensor. Power autonomy. It is one of the main constraints we consider in designing a wearable system because um, we required a, a battery to send uh, for uh, we required a power um, the, uh, without the power uh, the wearable devices which cannot be work so it should not be lost for one week or say for example for uh, several months it should be uh, working as much as it can. So this can be achieved by combined consideration of different aspects like energy storage, energy generation and energy management. So this is a fourth component, right? So energy is a fourth component. So all these aspects contribute to solve the problems of giving the system the necessary energy to perform at the best level for longest time and compatible with the requirement of the application. For storage, many different kinds of efficient batteries are co commercially available. For example, uh, lithium ion battery, like. 
the only criteria for the choose is to cope with the need of power autonomy and maintenance of systems batteries should last for a reasonable amount of time and if there are many different systems embedded in the textiles with a dedicated battery it is not feasible to recharge each of them every time they are used automatic recharging system should be used as for instance inductive charging this kind of system may be hidden for instance in the coat track that holds the garment when it is not worn another issue is a battery weight so since we are carrying the wearable device if the battery weight is more than say for 1 kg or 2 kg more than 1 kg it will be difficult to own that device right so it should be as much small as possible right so recently some interesting example of flexible batteries has been developed the greater advantage is the weight reduction and the possibility to obtain a flexible device that can be directly embedded with the garment energy generation is another piece of puzzle ideally a large amount of energy could be derived from the human body and from its interaction with surrounding environment last but not least issues to be considered in designing a power system for wearable devices is energy management right normally the highest power consume is due to transmission system therefore it is essential to limit as much as possible the transmission frequency and the amount of time during which the transmitter system is active so once of the device is not going to transmit any data we have to switch off the device okay it should be idle so that maximum amount of energy could be saved it may lose some energy in form of heat but if we if the technology is uh, something like uh, during the ideal situation it will be fit if it consumes very less energy means uh, we can use that energy for some other valid application right so this must be done without forgetting to take into consideration the application constraint both in terms of the sampling frequency of the signal to transmit and of the total time of autonomy that the system has in certain applications so i hope uh, this video will be uh, useful for you so in this video uh, the overview of with this uh, one is uh, we have uh, we have discussed about the components of the wearable systems uh, so uh, basically um, four components we have discussed uh, right one is um, sensors uh, communication devices uh, then electronics and um, data processing unit then uh, last uh, we have uh, considered um, energy that is battery right so i hope uh, this will be, will be useful so we will uh, discuss uh, the next topic in the next class some of my reference for making this videos i have given below first one Analisa Bonfiglo and Dilo D Rossi Wearable monitoring systems Springer 2011 Second one book is Gong Zong Yang Body Sensor Network Springer 2006 Third one is Fundamentals of Internet of Things IoT and Wearable Technology Design I triple press will the higher road. Fourth one, wearable sensor.
fundamentals implementations and applications edited by edward sasunovo second edition so thank you for listening to this video thank you one and all